Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking with you about projectile motion. So what is projectile motion? When an object is undergoing motion with the influence of gravity, the path the motion follows is what we call a parabola, seen here in red. The key to solving projectile motion questions is that the motion in the horizontal and vertical planes are completely independent. So you need to think completely, horizontally, and vertically, both at the same time. And we're going to use two sets of Suvat equations to solve these problems. OK, let's look at a cliff example. A boy kicks a football off a 10 meter high cliff with a velocity of 5 meters per second to the horizontal. So where does the ball land? Now, one thing that, that's nice about these kind of problems is that air resistance is negligible. So in the horizontal plane, uh, the, f the ball's going 5 meters per second all the time. We don't need to worry about any changes in the horizontal plane. The only plane we need to really be concerned about is the vertical. And the key to solving this, well, the time the ball takes to fall is going to be the same as the time for the ball moving forwards. Okay, so the time the ball takes to fall will be the same as the time the ball takes moving forwards. Okay, viewing this only vertically, if we look at the vertical motion of the ball, we can see that the initial vertical velocity is actually 0 meters per second. So how long will it take for the ball to fall? Well, let's have a look at the vertical components. So with our SUVATs, we've got uh, the displacement is 10 meters. The initial velocity is 0. That's in the vertical plane. So 0 meters per second. The final velocity, we don't know, but we don't need to know it. The acceleration, well, undergoing gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the time is what we're trying to find out. So we're going to go use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Now, that UT term at the very beginning, well, that's just zero because the initial velocity in the vertical component is zero. So we know 10 equals a half times 9.81 times t squared. And if we rearrange this, so t equals the root of 10 over half of 9.81, we get a time of 1.3 seconds. So now let's view only in the horizontal. If we now look at the horizontal motion of the ball, we can calculate how far forward it's gone in 1.43 seconds. And remember that 5 meters per second doesn't change. So in the horizontal component, we don't know s, but we want to find it out. The initial velocity is 5 meters per second, as is the final velocity, uh, 5 meters per second, because there's no air resistance. So any acceleration in the horizontal plane is actually zero. There is no acceleration. We know from the previous slide that the time it takes for the ball to drop is 1.43 seconds. So s equals u plus v over 2t. Put the numbers in, and in fact, u and v are both 5, so 5 plus 5 divided by 2 is, just gives you 5 again. So we know that the distance traveled from the cliff face is going to be 5 times 1.43 which gives us 7.13 meters from the cliff. Okay, let's look, at, let's look at something a bit more complicated. So when a ball is kicked up from the ground, there is an initial component of velocity going upwards. Find that first and then apply the equations of motion. So we, we've got a velocity v, and we can split that into two components. Uh, a vertical and a horizontal component. To find the vertical component, well, that's just v times sine theta. The horizontal component, well, that's v times cos theta. So kicking a ball, example two. A ball is kicked at 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. How far from the kicker does the ball land? So firstly, let's find the vertical and horizontal components of our velocity. So we've got uh, in the vertical, 15 times sine 30, which is 7.5 meters per second. And in the horizontal, we've got 15 times cos 30, which is 13.0 meters per second. So in the vertical components, we need to find the time for the ball to go up and down 
to the initial vertical height, which is zero. Okay, so it's going the ball's gonna go up and then back down to the same level. Okay. So the initial velocity going up was seven point five meters per second. It reaches a maximum height and then comes back down. And when it's passing the same point, because air resistance is zero, the speed is also going to be 7.5. However, when the ball is dropping downwards, uh, it's a velocity, and the direction is going down, so it's actually going to be a negative. So we don't know the distance, but u is going to be equal to 7.5 meters per second. v is equal to minus 7.5 meters per second. Acceleration, we've taken going up to be positive, so acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared, and while well, time we don't know. So we're going to use our super equation v equals u plus a t, and rearrange for t, so v minus u over a, we get t, and we've got minus 7.5, minus 7.5, divided by 9, sorry, minus 9.81, and we find that the time it takes for the ball to go up and back down is 1.52 seconds. Now, looking at the horizontal components, we know that this ball is going forwards with a velocity of 13 meters per second. The time, while well, it takes, is 1.52 seconds. And remember, that 13, it doesn't change because there's no forces acting in the horizontal plane. So there's no forces, therefore there's no acceleration. So the final velocity, the initial velocity, they're all the same. So we can use S equals brackets U plus V over 2T. So 13 plus 13 divided by 2, well that's just an average of 13. So 13 times by 1.52, that gives us a final answer of 19.8 meters from the kicker, from whoever kicked the ball. Okay, guys, I hope you have found this useful. Uh, please, uh, if you want more videos, just subscribe to the Physics Revision channel. And uh, just leave a message, comments, likes, all appreciated. Bye for now.